To begin the canopy mounting process, uh, there's a couple of first steps to make note of. First, as you can see, my rear top skins are only clicoed into position. Um, for the fitting of your canopy, it makes it a lot easier to just undo several of the clicos back here and allow the skins to kind of flare up so that the canopy can slide in easily. Um, another thing to make note of is you can see here that the canopy is already painted. Um, do these next steps before painting your canopy. Uh, I do recommend that you paint the canopy before final riveting onto the fuselage just because it's a lot easier to hang it up and paint it while it's off the plane rather than getting up upside down and painting. So the first step you're gonna do when you get your canopy placed as you see it here onto the plane is to make sure that the joggle lines up evenly uh, with your skin the whole way around, as well as you're getting a tight fit uh, with your rear top skins on the fuselage here uh, without causing them to bulge up and uh, be like pressed up by the canopy. Um, you're gonna do that by making sure that the lower edge on the inside of the canopy that you can see back there is uh, properly trimmed. Sometimes it'll have a little sections that are slightly too long and that causes the canopy to sit too high and so you'll put it, put it in place and mark the sections that are a little bit high and just slowly remove a little bit of material um, to make sure that the canopy is able to sit down uh, and, and rest nicely like this. Uh, the next step that you're gonna do once that's done, you're gonna put the canopy on, remove it, put it on, remove it two, three, maybe four times until it's all fitting perfectly. And then you'll begin match drilling uh, your fuselage side skins into the canopy. And as you can see here, that's what's been done. Uh, you drill through one hole, Clico it, the next hole, Clico it, and put a Clico in every hole along the way as you're going. And um, do that to both sides as well as the top. Uh, this particular airplane has the parachute option, and I'll show a little bit more detail there. You don't wanna dimple your overlapping uh, rear top skins where it touches the canopy uh, at this stage, uh, because you just wanna get everything matched up properly so that with the dimples, it'll basically push the skin up just slightly and it'll be harder to match drill everything into place. So we're gonna remove this canopy now and show a couple extra other steps as well as dimple uh, the necessary holes along the rear top skins and countersink the corresponding holes into the fiberglass uh, on the canopy. So this is the edge that I was referring to as far as trimming that and making sure that the canopy is able to get low enough on both sides. But you don't wanna to remove too much material, of course, and just make it more difficult when it's time to match drill if you have to lift the canopy um, you know, unnecessarily. Why make more work for yourself? Uh, so another thing to make note of here when you're fitting up your canopy is to make sure that the parachute cables, uh, if your canopy's fitted with them, rest nicely down uh, through these grooves in your side channels. Um, and then once, once that's uh, all fitting up nice, like I said, then you can uh, match drill and prepare for that. So another thing here at this particular step is don't yet worry about your aluminum retaining strip lining up. Just make sure everything's match drilled and clecoed. And um, then when we remove the canopy, we'll fit the retaining strips onto the canopy um, and just put little dabs of glue to hold them in place. So that way when we fit everything up, you're not scrambling trying to align that really thin uh, retaining strip to the inside of the canopy here. And it'll just help the process move a lot more smoothly once your adhesives are mixed and applied. So once your canopy's been test fit and everything's aligning how you like it to align and you've pre-drilled all of your um, holes from your fuselage side skins onto the canopy, uh, the next step is to take it back off one last time. And as you can see here, I've got my canopy retaining strips in place. Uh, it often requires a little bit of material removal uh, just along this edge here, a little bit of the foam uh, might need to come off so that you're able to get that retaining strip uh, to align to all your holes. And if the canopy retaining strips are oriented properly, all the holes that you've already drilled into your canopy should line up perfectly um, with the holes on the uh, canopy. So the next step is once these are able to fit down into position, I just undo them all except for you know one or two on the end here 
and then just add a dab of super glue in between each um, hole and reinstall the Clecos along the way after the dab of super glue. And that just holds it into position while we mount it up onto the canopy or onto the fuselage and um, go through the riveting process with that uh, Cicaflex uh, installed into position. So it uh, just kind of eliminates one extra step that you uh, don't want to you know, be wrestling with these strips. So, and once again, as I mentioned earlier, um, this canopy is already painted and ready to mount up. I do highly recommend painting the canopy before uh, installing it onto the fuselage. Um, it's just a lot easier that way to avoid any overspray on everything inside the fuselage, as well as um, just getting the paint, the gun uh, angled right. In addition to that, you can see I've got the wires run for my overhead lights, as well as this particular um, build has a uh, center console up top for some of the switches. So I've got all the wire run beforehand. Uh, you'll wanna do that just because once the canopy's on, uh, your space to work with between this, uh, the edge of the canopy and the, um, the Longeron in there get a little bit tight and you won't be able to run these wires. So, yep, as long as all of these things are done, we are ready to bond the canopy to the fuselage. And as you can see here, if you do have the parachute option, there are holes to be dimpled here, as well as on this side here. Um, so you'll wanna do that now, uh, before the final install of the canopy. We've already got all the holes um, drilled under the canopy, but the last step was to dimple these and countersink them on the, the uh, canopy itself. Another thing you'll want to do before the final install of your canopy is, as you can see, I've got rubber grommets on these lingerons on the side here. Um, so during your test fit ups, figure out where your wires are going to run um, and then drill ac holes accordingly along these lingerons. Uh, that way, when you install your canopy, the wires have somewhere to go and um, you're not trying to drill all these holes later on. Um, if it's easier, you do have the option to drill these holes ahead of time on your uh, Longerons before even installing all your skins. Uh, it's just hard to know exactly where they'll go and they are accessible enough with uh, a right angle drill tool or um, something of that nature. So that's my preferred method and so you can do what works best for you. But either way, you'll want those holes drilled before the install of the canopy. So the next step is to prepare your canopy for bonding to the fuselage. Um, a couple of steps are involved there. First, you want to abrade your composite where the mating surface is, as well as your aluminum, and use Sika Activator 205 um, on both surfaces. Uh, that kind of just cleans the surface off. Um, then I use Sika Primer 206 um, on both surfaces as well. As well. Um, this gets a good adhesion between or to the, to the substrate. And then the Sika 295 UV right here, um, that's your actual bond. So as you can see, I've got the, the primer and activator and then the Sika 295 applied on the canopy on all the mating surfaces. Um, and also you'll notice that I've got the canopy up on some boards just to keep some space for now. Uh, that allows you to work with it and not have to carry it anywhere or try to get it on once you've got your adhesives uh, put into place. Also, uh, if you can see right here, I've got the wires. Because the canopy is in this position, I'm able to run the wires most of the way through the grommets and into the fuselage just so there's that much less to do. Um, the Sika sets up uh, fairly slowly, so you're not really under the clock nearly as much as, say, when you're doing the fuel tanks. Um, but yeah, so we are now ready to pull out the wood. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to pull out this backboard first and allow the canopy to kind of tilt into position down underneath the rear uh, fuselage top skins. And then we'll pull out the front one, let everything place itself nicely and of course 
Through the process, we're going to be locating our parachute cables down through those channels. We're not going to worry about bolting them in just yet, um, but just kind of placing them where they go, um, as well as the front ones and the top ones. We're pretty much just going to let them rest gently up here. Uh, just be careful, of course, that you don't pull in any Clecos that are there or, um, of course, let them hit and dent your top skins. Uh, you could put a, a rag up there or a, uh, a moving mat if you need extra protection. So yeah, let's get this canopy bonded in. So the next step after you've shot all the rivets onto your canopy, uh, there should be some squeeze out of the Sika Flex along the, the mating surface between the canopy and your side skins. And so after the rivets are shot, I like to take uh, one of these yellow squeegees. Uh, they're really inexpensive. I actually cut them in half and then just run it along the edge here to make sure that that squeeze out isn't bulging or excessive in any way. Uh, we'll touch this up uh, in a little bit here and I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, so to finish off the canopy, um, you can do this. It's probably best to wait till your first layer of uh, uh, Sika Flex is set and dried. Um, and then what I like to do, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but this is kind of my preferred method, is to run a piece of masking tape exactly at the edge of the aluminum skin, then use a quarter inch piece of uh, fine line tape. So it's got a lot of flex and it can make it up around the uh, curve of the canopy back here. And then right at the other edge of that fine line tape, use masking tape again. Then you can remove the fine line tape from the center and run a small, very small bead of Sika Flex between your two pieces of tape. Come back with a squeegee and really press that Sika Flex in so that it, if there are any small gaps uh, between your canopy and aluminum siding, you're really pressing that down into that gap to really fill it and seal it. And then after it's dried the next day, you can come back and peel off your tape and it should leave a nice straight line um, the whole way down the side of your canopy as you see here. Um, there's lots of ways to do this. Some people prefer to take uh, super fill and fill in this gap and then sand it so it's smooth to try to kind of eliminate that, that, uh, that edge. I find that this does a fairly good job and as long as that line ends up being uniform at the quarter inch, it kind of acts as a gasket and if it is visible, so this is paintable, uh, your paint will adhere to it, no issue. And so I kind of find that this is such a fine step and it's perfectly straight to the skin because we've used that quarter inch tape and the gap is all the same. Uh, this does look uh, very good after it's painted and finished. Um, so just know that there's several different options there. Um, so you can kind of decide what works best for you. And so that's the end of this video. And for seat belts and all the other installations, uh, see the next video.